Hi, and welcome to part 3 of Sinchi's Data Collaborator series of videos. For this part, I'll be playing the role of Carson, an account director in the sales team. The third part of the series will cover the topic of data management, specifically importing and exporting data, populating and editing data in tables, approving and rejecting data, the recycle bin, and the collaboration log. Let's get started. Now that the contacts table has been confirmed to be accurate and up-to-date, Parker's asked me to import the remaining contacts into the table. I'll start by opening the contacts table, and then I'll click on the All Data view. Instead of manually entering the remainder of contacts, I'll import them using the Import button here. I'll have a quick look at the CSV file of contacts that I'm going to be loading in, just to make sure it looks as I expect it to. Great, I can see that the companies, relationship managers, contact names, and other details are all here. It's important to note that when you're importing data into a Sinchi table, that your column names from your source, in this example the CSV file, match the column names in the Sinchi table. I'll close the CSV file before I import the data into the table. If I leave it open, I won't be able to import it. I'll go ahead and click on the Import button. I now need to locate and choose the file for import. Great, I can see my file name here next to the Choose File button. Now it's time to choose the delimiter for the file. In this case, I'll be loading in a CSV file, so no need to change this. I can click Next now. Prior to importing, Sinchi will look at the data in the import file and determine what can be imported. There may be different reasons as to why data may not import into the table. However, common reasons can include the CSV column does not exist in the Sinchi table, you don't have access to insert or edit the data in the table, you don't have access to a linked table, or the column is read-only in Sinchi, including system columns. If there are any columns that can't be imported, the columns will appear under Columns to be ignored. Time to complete the import. I'll go ahead and click Next and then Import. So it looks like my import was successful with errors. I can see here that 24 rows were imported, but 8 were rejected. Before I click OK, I'll download and review the import error log to see what errors have been encountered. In column A of the CSV file, I'll be able to see the error messages for each record that was rejected. Let me expand the column so I can get a better idea of what went wrong during the import process. It looks like there's an issue with the column Communication Preferences. If I have a look at that column, the value for these records is Phone. I know that Phone is a valid selection in the Choice drop-down list, so what could be wrong? Oh, here it is. Phone is misspelled. I'll make the correction right in my error log file and use this file to import the remainder of the rows into Sinchi. Now that we've identified and fixed the issue, let's go back into Sinchi and see the results of the records that were successfully imported. I'll click OK now. I can see that there are now 70 records in the contacts table. The 8 rejected rows still need to be imported. I'll import them now. I modified the error log file instead of having to create a new file. If I make the correction in the initial load file and re-import the full contact list again, it'll add all the records into the table again which will lead to duplicate records in the table, which I don't want. I'll quickly check that all of my columns that need to be imported are being imported. Finally, I'll click Import. Great, my import was successful. There are now 78 records in the table. The head of sales has informed me that we've just obtained a new customer. He wants me to add a record for the new customer in the company's table. Let's go to the company's table. The empty record at the bottom of every data set is there to be populated if a new row needs to be inserted. Alternatively, I can right-click anywhere and insert a row if I have insert access. I'll begin by clicking on the checkbox here to indicate that the customer company is active. I can see that there's an error message on the right side of the screen. This is just letting me know that for the company to be saved, I'll need to populate the field in the number column that's been identified as mandatory. I'll now click on the cell in the company number column and type in the company's number. As I continue to populate the field, my error message will disappear. Now I'll enter the company's number of locations, name, street address, postal code, and city by clicking on the cells and typing in the values. The province or state column is a linked column. I'll be able to choose any of the values in the original column. In our case, it's linked to the abbreviation field in the province or state table, so I'll be able to choose any abbreviation listed in that column's dataset. 
I'll select NS for Nova Scotia. Since we've set the country for all provinces and states in the provinces and states table, we can have the country automatically displayed when selecting the company's province or state, instead of selecting the country for every new record. As you can see, Canada's automatically been selected. Great, our new customer's been added. Now I need to add our company contact to the contacts table. I'll click on the Sitchi button at the top left hand corner to go back to the My Network page, and I'll open the contacts table. When a table has a lot of records, this button here is an easy way to get to the bottom of a data set in order to insert a row of data. I'm going to link our contact to our recently created company. I'm going to begin by typing the company's name and then selecting it once it appears in my options. Great, here's the new company. Parker's informed me that this client will belong to our new sales rep in Nova Scotia, Andy Drew, because the company's headquartered in Nova Scotia. I'll quickly add a link display column to view the relationship manager's province or state. I'd like to ensure that Andy Drew is working in Nova Scotia. I'll select Andy Drew as the relationship manager. Perfect, his province is Nova Scotia. I'll check off the active status now. And I'll populate the remaining fields. For the communication preferences column, I have the choice to select more than one preference since the builders enabled multi-select on the column. Vanessa prefers to either communicate in person or over the phone. Great, I've created both the company and our new contact, but as you can see the new contact record is green and it indicates a create request is pending at the beginning of the row. The head of sales will need to approve my change before the record can be saved in the table. Hi, I'll be playing the role of Parker, the head of sales. We will look at the process of approving and rejecting data changes made to tables where enable change approvals is turned on. If you want more information on how change approvals are set up, be sure to watch the video series on table change controls. Carson, an account director, has asked me to approve the new record he has inserted into the context table. I'm going to open the context table now. I see the new contact. The record has a status of create request pending and the entire row is highlighted green because the row needs to be approved before the data changes are made official. I'm going to review the record to ensure it is correct before approving it. Oh, it looks like the email address is incorrect. I'll need to reject the row. To do so, I'll right click on the row and select reject row. Now the row is turned red and the approval state field now says created request rejected. I'll leave Carson a comment so that he knows why the row was rejected. I'm going to right click on the row and select comment. I'll enter in the comment and click the comment button. I'm logging in as Carson. Parker reached out and indicated that there was an error with my record. I'll open the contacts table now. My record has a status of change request rejected and the rows highlighted red. If I hover over the email address field, I can see Parker's left a comment indicating that I've input an incorrect email address. He's correct, it should be .com, not .ca. I'll correct that right now. Now that I've made another change to my record, the approval state for my record has changed to create request pending, again, and the row is highlighted green. I'll leave a comment for Parker, letting him know that I've corrected the email address. I'm on Parker's My Network page. Carson reached out and said he has updated the contact record. The status of the row has changed back to create request pending and is green again. When I hover over the email address, I can see the comment that I left for Carson along with the comment he left for me. Great, the record can now be approved. I can right click anywhere on the row and approve the row. Now the record has a status of approved and nothing in the record is highlighted anymore. I think I'll archive the thread between Carson and myself since the record now has been approved. No need to have that comment thread here any longer. I have the option to archive each comment individually by clicking on the container icon or to archive all of the comments by clicking the archive all button. I can delete my own comments by clicking on the trash can icon, but I don't have the option to delete Carson's comments or anyone else's comments.
I'll go ahead and archive the thread using the Archive All button. Now, all of the comments between Carson and myself have been removed from the table. All comments, including archive comments, can be found in the Comments table, which is one of Cinchi's default tables. I'm logged back in as Carson. Let's see if Parker's approved my record. Great, I can see that my record has an approval state of approved. I can see that the comment thread between Parker and I is no longer there. Looks like he archived the thread for us. Now that I'm in the contacts table, I want to confirm that all of my old and new contacts are correct. Parker should have transferred Chris's contacts to myself as Chris will be going on maternity leave soon. I'm going to filter the table to see only records where the relationship manager field contains my name. Perfect. Now I'd also like to add a quick sort on the company name column so that I can see my contacts in order of company. Great. I can see a lot of my notes fields are empty. I'll have to take some time to get that information into Cinchi. Now I'll review the rest of the data for my contacts. It looks like the data is correct so far. This looks strange. Janice doesn't work at Williams Inc. I'm going to have a look at the collaboration log to see what's been changed in the record and by who. I'll right click anywhere on Janice's record and select View Collaboration Log. So it looks like Parker's changed the company associated to Janice and the relationship manager. I'll be right back. I'm going to give Camila a quick call to find out if there's been a change in her account. Thanks for waiting. Camila said that was done in error, and Janice is still with ClickUp Systems. I'll click on the green revert button to change the record back to that version of the data. Great. Since she's telling me the record's been averted successfully, the company's back to ClickUp Systems, and the relationship manager's back to Camila. But since there are change approvals enabled on the table, the change won't be saved until an approver approves my change. Just a couple more contacts to review. Oh, where's Greg Smith's record? It seems to be missing. Oh, I wonder if when Alex was checking for duplicate records and saw Greg and Gregory, he thought it was a duplicate contact record. They do have a very similar name. I'll take a quick look in the recycle bin to see if he may have deleted the record thinking it was a duplicate. Here it is. When data is deleted in Cinchi, it goes to the recycle bin and it isn't permanently deleted. If data needs to be permanently deleted, you can do so using Data Erasure. For more information on this, see our Cinchi documentation on Data Erasure. There seems to be a comment on the record. Just what I suspected. He did think it was a duplicate record. No problem. I'll just restore the row by right-clicking on it and selecting Restore Row. Great. The row's been restored successfully. I'll leave Alex a comment on this record just to let him know that Greg and Gregory are two different people at Williams Inc.